Hi there guys, this video is going to be an unboxing of a model kit that I recently acquired in an exchange for an old kit that I've lost interest in and wasn't going to build. And this one was visually appealing to me although I knew nothing about the series. Uh, just a quick note for all those who've been following the um, the Panigale build, the Tamiya Panigale. I am still working on that. That will be finished before I do anything else. Uh, I'm currently in the process of modifying a, um, a Buzz Lightyear, which I will be doing a, a video of to show you that once I've completed it. It's all coming together. It's a slow process for all those that have been watching. Uh, please bear with me a bit longer and thank you for watching so far. On to this. What I have is a Citadel Warhammer 40,000 or 40k as I believe the guys that game with this stuff refer to it and certainly if you google or look on YouTube Warhammer 40k seems to be the, the um, chosen name of this. Um, this is a Blitzer Bomber. Um, it's it's kind of like a Obviously the similarity aspect of it for me is the fact that it's an aeroplane um, and I've built plenty of aeroplanes as anybody who builds model kits will have done in their time no doubt. Um, what's unusual and different for me is that it's a Warhammer Citadel kit which I'm unfamiliar with with the exception of a couple of um, uh, Space Marines do they call them? I don't know. These, these little guys anyway. Uh, these, these little fellas right here. Um, I think they're called Space Marines, I could be mistaken, but somebody gave me a couple of these from a games workshop a while ago and I've sort of been messing around trying different little bits of painting with those. But that's my total experience with Citadel kits. Uh, this is something completely new to me. Um, and what you've got is an aeroplane, but a very sort of Mad Maxi steampunk kind of jet fighter or jet bomber, if you will. And um, here's the front of the box, I'll show you all the sides of it. Here's the rear of the box showing a variant and different colour scheme. The sides there, as you can see, and then the box end like so. It's a sizeable box, it's much bigger than I thought it was. In the picture I saw I expected it to be considerably smaller, so it's a bit of a surprise when it arrived. Uh, on the back you've got a list of pins for the variants that it shows on the box, presumably in the instructions as well. We'll see when it gets into the kit. Um, the Citadel paints are brilliant for brush painting with. I can highly, highly recommend them for brush painting. They are the best acrylic paints I've ever used for brush painting and I use a range of their metallics because they have a very, very fine metallic um, metal flake in their paint. Um, which seems much more in keeping scale wise for kits than Tamiya's own acrylic paint version which is terrible for brush painting but good for spraying. So uh, also they have some very cool names uh, so don't go into a games workshop to buy Citadel paints expecting to find um, um, colours that you would find with say like Panzer Aces sets or or anything along those lines. Uh, they have great names like Ironbreaker and Mephiston Red and Evil Suns Scarlet with a Z and Wah! Flesh, which is a kind of green colour exactly as you would expect it to be with a name like that. Um, they have a broad range of colours anyway, uh, a massive range of washes and things and they're, they're a very good paint, they're great for brush painting um, and also if you happen to pop into a games workshop check out the paints and check out their uh, brushes, they have some really really nice quality brushes. Um, I have a, a Citadel detail brush which is one of my favourite brushes for small detail work, it's, it's very very good indeed. Um, <coughs> On the back it says, this box contains an Orc Blitzer Bomber, see the spelling below. This multi-part plastic model kit can also be assembled as a Burner Bomber, see below, or a Daka Jet, also see below. Now the Daka Jet is my favourite name, um, I'm assuming it's called that because it has a couple of great big cannons on the nose, a couple of cannons on the wing with uh, the bullet belts and it presumably comes from the daka 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 kind of thing. Um, I'm not sure if it does but it sounds good to me and I think that's what it does. So 
The model is supplied unpainted and requires assembly. We recommend using Citadel plastic glue and Citadel paint. Of course they do because it's a Citadel kit. In much the same way that AFX would recommend Humbra or Tamiar would recommend Tamiar, etc, etc. So uh, the paint obviously is down to personal choice. I shall be using a mixture depending on what I do with it, whether I'll be using Humbra enamels or Tamiar acrylics or Citadel acrylics or whatever I happen to have. Uh, the glue, as far as I'm aware, it's a, um, a styrene injection moulded kit. So, theoretically, any model glue should work. I shall be certainly trying it with my trusty old Tamiar Extra Thin. Um, so, if anyone knows different and Citadel glue is different, then please say below in the comments. Also, if anybody out there knows the rules for uh, or the general principle of the gaming side of things because I know nothing about that and you want to give somebody a sort of a bit of an overview of what the gaming side of it of what's involved in the gaming side of it uh, if you if anybody out there fancies building and actually getting into the gaming then please feel free to drop a comment in the box below for people to read uh, what we're going to do now is pan over to a flat surface and we're going to have a look inside the box at the kit and the sprues so with the box open inside we have a sheet of instructions giving directions and recommended tools and what have you and the instructions are at a glance pretty much as you would expect for um, any step-by-step -step, um, exploded diagrams for assembly giving you the relevant um, variances between the models of jet that you can build so that's straightforward and easy enough. Um, and what you've got over here in the box is what appears to be at first glance masses of sprues, but in reality is actually only three sprues, but very good, thick, solid, hefty ones. So what I'm going to do is move these aside and we'll look at each sprue individually. We're going to take a quick glance at each sprue. This is the first one, which has um, an interesting array of ordnance and some exhaust pipes and such. Pop that over to one side. The second sprue inside the box has um, the wing and tailplane components, uh, what appears to be part of the, the jet assembly, some of the machine guns and, um, and some grills, which I think are covers for these portions of the wing, which we'll look at in a bit closer detail in a moment. This third sprue contains the two halves of the jet body, as you can see on either end. Uh, these little things here obviously slot into here, for the, and then the wings into these. Um, that looks like part of the engine cowling maybe um, and parts of the turret I think this this here is is part of the uh, the pilot assembly um, and also over here although not very clear at the moment you've got various different heads of little sort of creatures Let's see if I can maybe get that to focus for you. Right up. Um, <clears throat> over here you've got a variety of, of heads to plonk onto the body. And I believe, I think that there is that there, one of the bodies, maybe, I'm not sure. Um, but you could, you've got various different heads to plonk onto the body to pilot and, um, and fire from the jet. Pop that aside, we've got a sprue of clear parts with uh, one of the components missing. Um, that looks to be quite nicely cast, well defined um, lines for the frame assembly. So that should paint up and coat with a dab of clear well and look good. And it also includes, there's the there's the bubble canopy that's just come loose from the sprue. Um, I'll say at this point, because this is how I got the kit, I don't know if these would normally be bagged inside the box. I'm assuming they would, but I don't know for certain. Inside the box we have a stand, 
which is quite a nice little addition. This is something you don't see very often. Uh, obviously you have to punch your own holes in that by the look of it. Um, sorry, get that in shot for you. Uh, that's You clearly have to punch your own holes in that base because it doesn't come with them. And then we've got a decal sheet that you can see there with a nice interesting variety of, uh, of decals um, and some fun could obviously be had with those. Bit of mixing and matching. Uh, and I guess this is all part of the whole uh, Citadel uh, Games Workshop Warhammer thing where you can customise these things to your heart's content and build yourself a custom army to do battle with. Um, so I'm going to switch to a macro mode and we're going to have a, a more detailed look at the sprues now. So here we are with a close-up of the sprues starting first with the ordnance sprue um, in the order that I showed you the full sprue. So as you can see you've got uh, lots of different rockets and things on here. I don't know if they've got specific names or anything so I'm just going to sort of give you a glossary of, of what we've got. You can see that the detail is really really crisp and nicely molded. Um, I've got to say I, I like that. Uh, you've got the sort of chunky rivets and the, the sort of stylized skull and crossbone design. Um, the big chunky uh, bombs with associated wiring and cowlings and thing as um, fuel tanks perhaps and um, this is another type of gun which is like a stylized chain, a square link chain which is kind of funky, I like that and I just spin that around and here you have the exhaust and I'm going to flip that over so you can see the other side again with really really good detail, the detail is kind of very exaggerated for the scale um, if this were to be, for example, a 48th scale aircraft. But uh, because of that, that's going to lend itself to really, really good uh, popping detail with dry brushing and, and the like, and washers. So as you can see, really good detail, uh, really nice and crisp, no flash at all that I've noticed um, uh, pretty much anywhere in the kit. And then you've got things like the cabin there, the cockpit tub, which is very, very simple in its moulding. Uh, but the detail otherwise is outstanding. A few swell marks, as you can see, in some of the pieces. And a couple of sort of ejector pin marks, but they, they all seem to be well hidden. They seem to be on internal bits and pieces. So that's kind of nice. On to the next sprue. And this is the one that has the wings. So I can show you the, the detail of the wiring or ribs or whatever they happen to be inside the wing, which I think is kind of nice. So you could leave those open and a bit of a, an oil wash and some dry brushing on that really make that pop out. You've got uh, part of the cannons, the wing cannons with the gun belts, nicely detailed there. Again, uh, large sort of exaggerated rivets. Uh, cannons with cooling slots cut in the outer barrels. These are your flaps which go over these plates here and you've got further details on these parts, the stylized skull and crossbones. You've got alternative exhaust pieces just here and further flaps for the wing and then these components here are all connected to the, the bits that the wings that make the wing slot onto the body if that makes sense I'm not sure what you'd call them the wing root essentially um, and these are for one of the bombers so it allows the wing to be upswept more cannons and things over here another cowling here with the stylized skull design on tail fins that's pretty much that one some uh, I think this bit's something to do with the jet I think this bit here's something to do with the jet cowling but I'm not sure but uh, that's pretty much that one. And then the final sprue which has the body shell on. I'll give you a close up of this one just so you can see the detail because it really is stunning. It's, as I say, it's, uh, it's very exaggerated, definitely, if you're into building 48th scale uh, war aircraft. Uh, these panel lines in full scale would be like trenches, you know, and the rivets would be enormous. But the style of the kit really lends itself to this exaggerated sort of steampunk kind of style, really. So here you've got the wing roots with the jets on. 
um, which go onto the body regardless of which bottle, uh, which variant you're building. Again, the other side of the body there, you can see all the really, really good detail. Um, over here is uh, some little bits and pieces. The gun sight, I think that is. I think that might be a pivot point for the rear gunner. An engine cowling with, with slot vents cut in there. Um, we've got this bit here, which is part of the pilot's body, if I can get that into better focus for you. And this is th this is part of the pilot's body that sits in the cockpit with the appropriate head. Uh, more cannons and bullet belts and what have you. Up here we have an arm, very nicely cast with sort of muscly orc arm detail, whatever you would call that. And the other arm here, which are holding the control sticks, control yokes. And this bit here, which I'll flip over so you can see, is the rear gunner, which has the feet moulded in place down at the bottom there, if you can see those, hopefully you can. And it has a little orc type creature in the back, if you make the bomber variant with the rear gunner. And speaking of, oh yeah, there's a pair of feet there for the pilot, presumably. And speaking of the, the variants and the heads and what have you, oh, there's another one, look. There's, there's another rear pod with a pair of feet in the bottom. So uh, obviously that depends on the variant that you make. I suspect as well that you can mix and match, maybe make your own variant from this, which is kind of cool as well. But speaking of heads and choices, this is the bit that I really wanted to show you close up because the detail is, is really, really fabulous. And these are your variants for the heads and hopefully you can see how well detailed these things are I mean they're absolutely amazing you've got little orc heads with um, with big pointed teeth for all you Monty Python fans out there with big pointed teeth and goggles and uh, pointy ears very scary looking creatures and we've got a um, these orc heads which I think are bigger ones which I think are the pilot. We've got one here with like a, a military cap and then one with a flying hat and goggles. Another one here with what looks like a pair of shades and headphones. One with a flying scarf flip it, uh, flapping behind it in the breeze. So that's the third sprue and its contents. A lot of fun to be had with that one I think with all the variants of heads and such like. And just for completeness Let's have a close-up of the clear sprues, so you can see, very nice, a little bit of a polish needed, um, a few little swirls and scratches, but I think that's mainly because it's been rattling around in the box, unbagged. As I said earlier in the video, I don't know if these are typically bagged when they're new, because I, I got this kit um, second-hand, so that I'm, I'm not sure of. But, uh, well moulded, nice crisp panel lines, a little bit of a polish up and a dip in clear, and they'll come up very nicely indeed and just for finality a little bit more detail on the uh, the decal sheet hopefully that will show up quite well because I've got this light kind of glare in here to to allow you to be able to see it. you can see there some of the white skull designs which will look good on some dark backgrounds and then these are the wing leading edge strips in various patterns so uh, and there again you can see some more white decals there which are very hard to see when the light's shining directly on them but that's the kit for you in close-up detail now we'll go to an overview so I hope you found this useful and especially so for anybody that has maybe walked past a games workshop, had a quick peek inside, maybe looked at some of the models and what have you, and has considered looking into getting one and building one at some point, but has just never gotten around to it. And you've maybe often wondered what kind of quality they are and what they look like inside the box. That should give you a bit of an idea. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.